Tucker Kelly here from Ms. Performance, and today I'm going to be talking a little bit about hatching your own ducklings or goslings or chickens. Starting with the beginning where you just collect the eggs, then going to storing them and eventually candling them, taking them out of the incubator, and basic brooder setup for your little ducklings and goslings. So without further ado, here we go. It all starts at morning chores. Every day I put on my chore boots and head out to do chores. First, I let the ducks and geese out, and the geese greet the new morning. <laughs> then I give them their snacks. Today it's red cabbage, one of their favorites. It actually makes their poop bluish. Then I give them their water. Ducks and geese love their water. Then it's time to collect eggs. Ducks and geese like to bury their eggs, which helps keep them from freezing in the winter time. You can see over on the left hand side, I've got two geese sitting on a nest. They're trying to hatch some out. I hope they do. Got five so far today out of seven hens. That's pretty good. I just brought the duck eggs in from doing chores and I'm now going to store them for a couple of days before putting them in the incubator. You can save duck, goose, and chicken eggs for up to seven days before putting them in the incubator. Some people say you can do 10 days. However, in my experience, I've found you're better off only saving them for seven days. When you are saving eggs to hatch, it's important you only save the normal ones. No abnormally small ones, no cracked ones, and no double yokers. Like this one here. I can tell it's a double yoker because of its size. And when I candle it, I see two distinct marks. There where one thumb is and there where the other is. Those are both yolks. Those are double yokers. And double yoker eggs rarely hatch. So I guess I know what I'm having for breakfast. I just store duck and chicken eggs in normal egg cartons. The only important thing to do is make sure the air pocket is up. It's on the blunt side of the egg. I know that because when I candle it with this year bright light, it's right there on the top. See that darker part? That's not the yolk. That's the air pocket, and that goes up. Now I set the egg carton somewhere out of the way on a little block of wood and move it to the other side every day so the yolk doesn't get stuck on one side. For goose eggs, my preference is to set them in a box with some hay and come back every day to turn them. When you are incubating the eggs, you want the humidity to be between 45 and 50% for chicken eggs and 50 to 55 or 60 for duck eggs. Eggs, you're gonna be adding water once a day with this little thing probably to keep it up to the right temperature. And then for duck and goose eggs, you want to mist them once a day lightly. Also, when they start hatching, that would be day 18 for chicken eggs, day 25 for duck eggs, and day 28 for goose eggs. You wanna increase that humidity and stop spraying. You're gonna wanna set the incubator's temperature to 99.5 degrees Fahrenheit, then lay them on the floor of the incubator, or simply put them air pocket up in your automatic egg turner for the same reasons as earlier. Or if you don't have an automatic egg turner, come back five times a day to turn the eggs. Okay, so it's day number 10 for the eggs in the incubator, and today I'm going to candle them. You do this to find the fertile ones, to find the bad ones. You got to remove all the ones that have no development because those ones will eventually rot, and that'll hurt the amount of that'll hatch or the hatch rate. So you only want to remove all the bad ones and only keep the good ones with the blood vessels, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, so now I'm gonna candle the eggs. I've got all the lights off so I can see it. I've got a big light here. It's a DeWalt flashlight. Works great for candling duck and goose eggs with their thick shells, but you could get away with a flashlight for duck or chicken eggs. So here's the first one. It's definitely fertile. It's reddish. 
Yes, I can see blood vessels, and ooh, right there, there's a heart. It might not show up that well on camera, but I'll put a picture of it in the screen, and wow, this is cool. All right, I'm gonna put it in the incubator before it gets too cold. In contrast, here's an unfertile egg. As you can see, it's basically the exact same as a normal egg, or one that was just laid. So yeah, this is going in the garbage before it uh, rots and makes everything nasty. And here is a goose egg. I like to use a piece of cardboard to focus the light. And yeah, I can tell it's fertile just because it's way redder than a normal goose egg. It can be hard or because goose eggs are really red to begin with. And the best trick, there's a heart there. You probably can't see it on camera. But uh, the best way to tell if a goose egg is fertile and developing is really to look at the air pocket here this is the air pocket up top and it's way more defined than an infertile goose egg or one that was just laid so it's I can definitely tell it's developing so put this one back as well all right so here's an infertile goose egg as you can see it's more orange than red and if you look right here there's the air pocket it's way smaller and less pronounced so this one's uh, definitely not developing so uh, yeah, this one just gets thrown as well so it doesn't rot. So on day 18 for chicken eggs, day 25 for duck eggs, and day 28 for goose eggs, you want to remove the automatic egg turner and lay eggs flat on the grate in there so they can hatch. If you aren't using an automatic egg turner, just stop turning them. All right, so it just came down to check everything. I looked inside the incubator and look what I saw. The first gosling on the hatching. Right now, yeah. Day 29. So it's been about 24 hours since our little gosling hatched and I'm now gonna take them out of the incubator. You leave them in the incubator for the first 24 hours so they can dry off, eat everything that was inside of the egg, and also get a little bit stronger before you move them out. So now I need to set up the brooder and then he can come out of the incubator Okay, so now I'm ready to set up the brooder. First thing I need to do is turn on the heat lamp, which is that metal thingy up there. Now that that's done, I need to add some bedding to it to make it nice and cozy for them. For uh, baby birds, my uh, preference is definitely the pine shavings. And they are way, uh, they're way better than straw or hay because that's just too big and too hard for them to walk in. And I like the tractor supply shavings. They're bigger and thicker. The stuff from other companies is just kind of garbage it's so small and chicks actually can eat them and die you don't want that so the nice tractor supply stuff like you see here the next thing to do is give them some food just make sure for waterfowl it's non-medicated grain so no antibiotics or anything like that and also if it's the crumble feed this little granular stuff it's far better if you're using pellet feed for babies you need to get it wet and that's just messy and time consuming. So I just use crumble, got their little feeder there on a block of wood, dump that in. Then they obviously need water. For babies, I like to use the little feeders. Hers with no tops, and I just put that over there in the corner. It's more convenient to have a jug of water handy than needing to go take it to the sink every time. So just fill that up. Now the cage has water, food, bedding, heat, it's ready to move him in. Okay, so here he is, the first little gosling that hatched yesterday. See, he's all dried off compared to when he was when I first hatched him. And look at that picture in the right-hand corner. He was way wetter, and he's ready to go in. All right, so the first thing I do when you put him in there, you need to dip their beak in water so they know where to drink. Also dip it in the food so they know where to eat. Then I always dip it in water again, just so they get the hang of it. Now, set them down gently under the heat lamp so they can stay nice and warm. And that's it. Okay, so as you can see, I've had a couple more hats. Hatch, and I've got them in water. I like to get them in water basically the day after they hatch. It's good for them as long as it's warm out and the water's not over their head so they can still touch. It just helps their feathers grow away quicker. And it's kind of fun to watch them play in it too. Oh, you want out? Hello. Oh, yeah. So yeah, I've got a couple more still hatching in the incubator. When they're all done hatching, I just need to take everything out, throw away all the eggs that didn't hatch, and then clean it out with a sponge and a little bit of water and some Dawn dish soap. 
Thanks for watching. I hope this video is of some help or enjoyment to you. If it was, please give me a thumbs up. And if you want to find out more about us or in the greater southern New Hampshire area and want to get some hatching eggs from us, check us out on Facebook at Mizpah Farms. Link below.